just watching all these youngsters hustle by. Can't believe we were part of this group once upon a time. You know, Kashi, the same thoughts go through my mind when I sit here. And everything seems to move at warp speed, except for this bench and three of us. What is time? 6.45. Thank you, boss. The world is moving so fast that people truncate sentences, eliminate an article, and unwittingly convert an existential question into a philosophical one. What is time indeed? I resisted the urge to tell him that if he wanted to know what is time, then come sit down, let us chat. I hate it when these blighters keep an article. What is time? I want to take bath. <laughs> I tell you, why do we have articles then? The, uh, they all add elegance to the English language. When my grandson says, Grandpa, what is time? I do not answer until he says, what is the time? <laughs> Is anybody within earshot, Charlie? <coughs> no, the coast is clear. Are you sure? We can't be too careful, you know. <coughs> Nobody around. Just go ahead. My God, Kasi. You're an evil son of a bitch. I can't believe you're this stuffy. I'm surprised your son and grandkids haven't thrown you out of the house. Bahala, you're in a very good mood today. I like to use anal son of a bitch. It makes me feel like I'm in control. I heard my grandson use it on the phone and I made a mental note that I would use it when I got the opportunity. You see, at my age, our age, as tenured senior citizens, people would get scandalized when they hear this kind of language. But for me, this hour of the evening is the best part of the day. And I hope it stays this way. There you go, Bala. Sentimental on us again. I'm sure the feelings are shared. In fact, the best things in life need not be said. Cliché, but true. <laughs> Yo, hey, day. Hey, isn't that Ambi's granddaughter, Roshni? I feel bad for him. He's so devout. <coughs> he spends all his nut time next to the garbage now. What do you mean? He don't know that he's a self-appointed garbage inspector of the society? Try mixing plastic with some wet garbage and he will order the garbage collectors to stop collecting garbage from your house. I think what he's doing is the right thing to do, but he could at least give us one warning. How do you know this? My missus was upset about ten days back with the garbage lady did not come by. The next morning, she got her clearing garbage from the floor below. Apparently, young beer told her not to collect garbage from our house because we had thrown a few plastic cups <laughs> along with the wet garbage. But you did not confront Ambi. I did. I told him that he could have at least warned me. He said, that there was a notice on the notice board stating that Ambi Shekhar had volunteered to ensure that garbage disposal standards would be maintained and in the interest of reducing pollution to the environment, garbage will not be collected from houses that did not adhere to the policy. Clearly, none of you have seen the notice. <laughs> no wonder. Yesterday morning at about 5.30, I saw Ambi with a few stray dogs looking into the garbage dumpster outside our community. If he would spend some time looking at his granddaughter's wardrobe, he would be better off. <laughs> I think I saw Roshni the other day at the corner shop with a Nigerian. How do you, do you know he's a Nigerian? How does it matter, sir? Could be an Ethiopian, an African, I'm sure. If we allow our girls to dress like this, people will think we are living in a red light area. And this is very disturbing. My wife was right. 
That it is where we are disturbing. Arre, let me complete what I was trying to say. Some years ago, my wife attended Roshni's coming of age ceremony. After that, she told me, that girl, very difficult child. Bala, you know my granddaughter Anjali? Arre, who doesn't know? Such a lovely girl. All our children should be like her. So innocent. Last evening, she very accusingly asked me if it is true what happens between birds and bees. Huh? She is not even ten. Hi, yo. And what did you tell her? What will I tell her? I almost fell rushing to the toilet. <laughs> Spent 30 minutes there pulling the flush every two minutes. What a waste of water. <laughs> and why are you telling us this? My wife said last evening she saw Anjali talking to Roshni for a few minutes. My wife wanted me to talk to Ambi, but I am waiting for some proof. I tell you, are these girls who walk around with short skirts and sleeveless, they are very dangerous. If we are not careful, they will soon be attracting the hippies into our society. <laughs> Aren't you getting a little carried away, Baba? No, 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 I am not. The problem is, Roshni's parents have left her with the grandparents. They are in Dubai making money. Poor Rambi, what does he know what his granddaughter is up to? Huh? I tell you, uh, as a society, we must have right values. We need a proper moral code. Ambi is coming this way. Keep your voice low. Oh, I don't care. He may not be as close to me as the two of you are, but I think he needs to know. Hey, Ambi! 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 Yeah. Why don't you join us for a while? Come, come. Sure. What news? Oh, nothing much. Uh, at the half age, being healthy is good news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ambi, can I ask you a question? Uh, as a friend? Of course. Do you think Roshni is dressed inappropriately? Don't you think you are too old to be looking at how these young girls are dressing? <laughs> I mean, Hey, they are young girls of today. Who are you to decide what they should wear or not wear? Eh? A hundred years ago, I'm sure your great grandfather was walking around in a Lankoti. <laughs> and I'm sure he was wearing pretty much nothing else. It was okay then. But today, if one of us is to walk naked but for that Lankoti, the public would throw stones at us. Hey, times have changed, Bala. And you need to change. Look, I have no problem with her dress sense and I have implicit faith in her. Ambi, don't say later that I did not warn you. Okay, Bala, I heard you. Hey, changing topics. My great granddaughter, my granddaughter, was saying that in one of these high end villa communities here, they are planning on having the entire community Wi Fi enabled. So much so, you can text, email, or serve from any part of the community or your home, including the restroom. Given the teacher was spending increasing amounts of time in the restroom, may not be a bad idea even for senior citizens like us to consider. Will come at a huge cost, I'm sure. I think it's a waste of money and unnecessary. Mm. Oh, forget the affordability. If I can afford it, I would say why not? You know, as I see all the changes happening around us, I cannot help but think what the future will be. Say, uh, two decades from now, none of us will be there, I'm sure, but the future will be that much better for our grandchildren. How much more are we going to consume? There is only so much that the earth can give us and we are doing everything possible to destroy it. Leave the world with something for the next generation. If you can't do anything for the society, then don't. I'm not asking you or myself to give back to the earth. They are probably incapable of, or at the very least, I am. Kashi, I have never seen you this passionate on any topic. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Given that uh, 
we have two very differing thoughts on what the future would look like. How about this? Each of us writes down what we feel the world 20 years from now would look like. Put it in a safe with clear instructions. The safe should not be opened 20 years from then when our time is up also. Our kids by then would look more kindly to us. And this would help provide a fillip to each of our legacies. <laughs> Great idea, Chari. You're getting wiser as you mature. <laughs> but jokes aside, you know, maybe not to the same extent, but in our society too, uh, they are thinking of increasing the maintenance costs and to set up a sinking fund. I have a nagging suspicion that after a while they will route all this money to futuristic projects. You are just being paranoid, Bala. Oh, even if they don't, I cannot afford it. I don't mind telling you this because all of you are of the same vintage as me. Going down to those meetings and having to say that I cannot afford it is it's painful. Digest the look on the face of these youngsters as if to say, Why don't you go and live elsewhere? I know it's painful, but we need someone to protect their interests too. With the elections coming up for the committee, Kashi, maybe you should have a representative on the committee. You would be able to steer the others from wasteful investment, knowing your philosophy on wasteful consumption. I don't mind being part of the committee. I'm sure it will provide some entertainment, if nothing else. But you guys are forgetting something critical. Apart from the three of you and some work that I've done in the past on the bylaws, I do not know anybody in the society. So it is wishful thinking. <laughs> don't worry about getting elected. No one is standing this year as usual. So consider yourself in the committee. Hema, what are we waiting for? Hank, we're waiting for Kasi Mama. And why are we waiting? Oh, come on, Hank. It is in our culture to wait. Especially if it is an older person. I think you spend too much time outside India. Kasi Mama. Kasi Mama. It is our privilege to have one of the original framers of the bylaws on the committee. Oh, in some ways, I'm glad that we all elected ourselves. God bless you all. <laughs> oh, sir. Thank you all. I think that there may be people here, many of us, who don't know each other. So it would be great if we each introduced ourselves and uh, told us why we want to be on the committee. May I go first? I'm not quite done yet, Arjun. Okay, sorry. Um, well, let us start. Um, you, oh, I am presuming that you all know that this is the most thankless job you could agree to do. <laughs> and uh, when you have left, when your term is finished, you can only come out tainted. Regardless of how wealthy you are, <laughs> Regardless of how little money with the committee, there will be always some section of the society that will think that we have made money. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, I mean, I presume we volunteered and then uh, we were elected unopposed, which leaves me even more intrigued. Uh, let us start with Kasi Mama and then we can go around the table. 
<laughs> At my age, it is all about giving back to the community. I'm here to help each one of you run the administration. Hopefully, my experience will be of some use to you. As we move into the new, hopefully as a traditionalist, I will be able to help you take the right decisions. I will be your conscience and will remind you if you're trying to change, uh, just for the sake of changing. Before I get into why I am on this committee, is there a person with serious psychiatric problems living here? Can we have webcams installed in the elevators? What happened, Hank? It appears that we have a urinating maniac in the apartment complex who thinks it is right to pee in the elevator. We need to report this to the police for public indecency. We need to have posters in each elevator saying, you urinating deranged maniac, cease urinating or shall face the consequences. We need some draconian laws and that's why I'm on this committee. What do you have in mind? I will not go as far as the Sharia. But this person has to be taught a lesson. This person is clearly demented. We need some strict laws in place. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, don't want to get sidetracked. So, uh, uh, Kasimama, would you like to say something? Uh, Mr. Hank may be confusing cause and effect. Oh, what do you mean, Mama? Maybe the problem is physiological and not psychological. That sounds absurd. <laughs> Hank, show some respect. Uh, Mama. What are you suggesting? But forget toddlers. Think about the very old people. Maybe the problem is physiological. I can speak for the very old people. Uh, bladder control can become difficult. That is disgusting. Then these old farts. I mean men. Should they not leave their homes or walk around in a diaper? One day you will get there too, Mr. Hank, and it will come faster than you think. Anyway. Uh, this society is for the young and old, and uh, we just need to find a solution to this problem. Many senior citizens have been complaining that we do not have enough restrooms in the common area. What does that have to do with urinating in the elevator? Hey, Shilpas, Mr. Hank, it's a long walk from the garden to the elevator. Also, occasionally, one must wait a while for the elevator to become aware of it. I was planning on talking about this a little later, but we may need to have a small urinal just next to the elevator on the ground floor. Mr. Money, in computer science, there is something called the last mile problem. Think of this urinal as solving that last mile problem. I'm sure it will address the issue most of the time. Don't teach me about the last mile problem. I'm a computer scientist. Never thought about it in this context, though. And what do you mean it will address the issue most of the time? We will still have a few stray incidents in the elevator in case of power cut, fright, can accelerate bladder release or incontinence. Uh, Mama! <laughs> Mama, I appreciate your wisdom and we, we really do need to do something for the senior citizens. Uh, but for now, perhaps we can have the others introduce themselves. Fascinating. Nasi Mama, that was certainly interesting. I guess this is what experience is all about, looking beyond the obvious. I would never have thought that urinating in an elevator could have been an involuntary act. So, uh, anyway, I joined this committee because my wife asked me to. She was a member in one of the earlier committees and she said it would be a great opportunity for me to connect with the society since my return to India about a year or so ago. I was a little skeptical, even thought she might be setting me up for needless stress as I've heard horror stories. But, but, but here I am. <coughs> Gentlemen and ladies, my English is not very great, as you know. So unlike this foreign written Hank and Arjun, my reason to join the committee is to do with my business. I sell diamonds. And the industry is a lot of small folks. I need to become a politician. My distributor told me, become a society committee member if you can be successful there, you can be successful anywhere. So I'm taking the challenge. And by the way, if there is any bribe at all to be done, for wireless and purpose, you can tell me. <laughs> I can help. Thanks, Jignesh. But we are a straight society. I mean that we are an honest society. And uh, we are not, we do not need to know about all this bribe and stuff. As treasurer of the society, you need to be extra careful. 
I am glad we have Kasi Mama. People trust him, so we should be okay. And Hima madam, have you seen our parking violation? <coughs> then, not enough place for fire engine to come into the building. Big violation. BBMP can come and close our building. <laughs> Luckily, nobody has come here so far because I know a few folks there. But I must tell you, huh? we may have to give some money. Let us not get into all that now. All this money stuff and bribe and everything is nonsense. Uh, and anyway, we can discuss that later. Uh, for me, we need to make sure that Poseidon Gateways is child friendly and culturally enriching for our citizens. Um, last year, the participation for Diwali, Dasera, Ganesh Chaturthi, Republic Day, Independence Day was so poor. So, other than being the secretary, I'm also going to volunteer to be the cultural secretary. Oh, wonderful, Sahana. And we all know that being the cultural secretary is a thankless job. Uh, no puns intended. <laughs> I didn't get it. It's a long and painful story, Arjun. Every year, the members of the society volunteer to help for various efforts. And uh, every year, invariably, we end up forgetting to thank some person for their help. And it ends up becoming a big issue. What is the big deal? Just stop thanking anybody. They're volunteers. They want to do it. In fact, they need to thank us for letting them volunteer. <laughs> It is in our culture to thank people, Mr. Hank, and when we do that in front of everybody, people feel vindicated for their efforts. What? Ever. Mr. Hank, this is a very sensitive issue, and as a, a committee, it is important for us to be aware of the consequences of getting it wrong. We forgot to thank one of our members. Accidentally, two years in succession, and the president had to write an apology note to the member, which we had to keep on the notice board for two weeks. What kind of a eula would apologize for something this trivial? Hank. While I may not use language as strong as Hank's, I still don't see why the president would need to apologize unless forgetting to recognize someone was not accidental but deliberate. We are all nice people in this society, Mr. Arjun. It was certainly not deliberate. Okay, okay. Look. The lady we forgot to thank complained bitterly to her husband when he responded ex about exactly like Hank would. Uh, she was distraught and uh, well, questioned the very foundations of her marriage. You're making it sound like she went into depression. She did. Okay. And not only that, she threatened to leave her marriage. Her husband was wise enough to wash his dirty linen in public. And you know how we Indians are, close-knit group of people, only when things go wrong. Her husband came and spoke to the committee and the president wrote the apology note. During those two weeks, every day a bunch of people went and thanked her with retrospective effect, uh, <laughs> as accountants would say. She got better and the rest, as they say, is history. Wow, is all I can say. Yes, we have digressed enough. Well, I am happy to be president of the society. For me, it is about making sure that the value of this property continues to go forward so that when people uh, think about Poseidon Gateways five years from now, it will still be the address that people are proud to belong to. So, we have a lot of work to do and, oh, don't expect any help from previous year committee members. Many of the residents don't like you. I know. I have been very vocal in previous uh, committee and, and general body meetings. And oh, last year's committee members were giving me dirty glances when I put up my hand for the president's position. But uh, I don't care. We will run this committee like a corporate. We will show our neighbors exactly how to run a committee. 
Uh, given that, that the bylaws laid out the foundation for the constitution, why don't we do a quick RT of the bylaws? <laughs> yes, Mama. Arjun, will you please ask security to get some camphor so that we can all say a quick prayer? <laughs> so, uh, we have a lot to do. Uh, I think that we should split into two. <laughs> too many issues to address. And some of these need to be addressed this year itself. Our community has been together now for, oh, for over five years and the cracks are beginning to show. Um, along with getting work done, we need to apply the healing touch. Uh, Kasi Mama's somber presence will help us get the temperatures down. So um, I would like to suggest Kasi Mama's name for the grievance committee. Mama, what do you say to that? Uh, I'm here to help in whatever little way I can. Uh, may I suggest? Of course, Mama. We are waiting to hear your wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> you are very kind, Sahana. God bless you. And last year, there were many wars on email. I suggest that we do not engage our email. While we have an email areas for people to share their grievances, I think we should have one hour every week for people to come and share their concerns face to face. I will personally attend these meetings. That's a wonderful idea. Chignesh, looks like you would like to volunteer to be part of the committee with, with Kasimama. Absolutely. It will be a real treat to engage with the society members and to learn from the elderly. Uh, Thank you very much for the opportunity. That is great then. Now then, uh, Arjun and Hank, uh, can you uh, take care of the uh, sinking fund requirements? car parking violations, gym equipment vendor selection, deciding on billiards timing, and uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. You know, I just know what to, oh, oh, well, anyway. You are both from the US, and this year we have to take care of the maintenance fees and the sinking fund. And because you're both from the US, the community will not think that you're stealing money. But just remember huh, that the residents will try every trick in the book to avoid paying the increase in maintenance fees or delay the sinking fund. Uh, oh, just remembered the biggest bylaw violation, enclosing balconies. We need to send a stinking notice to all those who have enclosed their balconies. Uh, yes, sir, Jim? Well, I'm honestly a little worried about the enclosing balconies issues as I've enclosed mine as well. I know. If you can demonstrate on some technicality that it is okay for you to have enclosed your balcony, fine. But if not, then send yourself a stinking note. And because, it, well, it's going to increase the credibility of this committee if we are seen to be hard on our own members. My wife reads all the notices that come home and I can't tell her I wrote a stinker to myself you should have thought of that before you enclose the balcony, no? Nah? Oh, just just talk to Kasi Mama and try and see if you can pass the bylaws. He knows them like the back of his hand. Uh, on the cultural front, there's so much to be done. All those festivals, um, we may need some contribution from society members to serve lunch or dinner. Uh, no booze, please. Yes, some of these men in the complex behave like junglies as soon as they see, see some booze. Everybody wants to sing after they've taken a few drinks. Many of them should never be allowed to stand in front of a mic. But Sahana Madam, how can you say that? It is so much fun to drink and then do karaoke. Maybe, but why do you have to sing devotional songs in karaoke? People don't usually do that. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, look, we have a lot of work to do. So now, coming back to the residents. The moment that we ask them for contributions, these folks will make up some excuse not to attend the event. And when some of our rich neighbors with black money are willing to sponsor the event, there'll be some big egos coming in and saying, oh, we cannot take charity. Man, I don't know why they should care. Hema, I object to eating if somebody else sponsors it. I'm happy to contribute any time. Money is not an issue for me. Uh, we all know that you are rich, Hank. Oh, I don't want to. Now, there's just no time, there's too much to do. Now, Sahana, we cannot have the uh, fiasco that we had last year on Independence Day. How can I forget, no? So embarrassing. I get dreams about it even now. All of us waiting at the quadrangle in Independence Day spirit. 
and Bala Mama trying to unfurl the flag. The flag would not open. And as we stood there shocked, our secretary also tried to unfurl the flag. But the flag would just not open. I heard some people laughing. I think it must have been the North Indians. I don't know who called the police. Hey, Sahana, how, how can you say there's a North Indian, huh? Do you know, I had to bribe the police because we were threatening to take the president and the secretary to jail. <laughs> hey, listen, I did not ask for the money back from the society because the previous committee members would have asked me all kinds of questions. Okay, okay, please, let us not fight amongst ourselves. Kasi Mama, why are you smiling? Maybe it is as well. Uh, meaning? Have you folks noticed that a senior citizen who hoists the flag on Independence Day is no longer with us the next Independence Day? <laughs> I think Bala was not able to pre sleep the previous night. <laughs> what was the big deal? He could have said no. It is easy for you to say, Mr. Hank, this is a privilege that is given to the oldest member of the society, so it would be awkward to say no. Also, at our age, we are not expected to be concerned about our mortality. In fact, many of us routinely tell anyone who's willing to listen that we are ready to die. However, I think, I think what worried Bala the most was the possibility that in the current geopolitical environment, if he refused to unfurl the flag, some patriotic people in our complex may call him a traitor and may have asked him to go to Pakistan. <laughs> I have never heard anything this bizarre. <laughs> passing by the committee room. All the youngsters were listening to you very carefully. Manikandan's son was also there, no? Uh, I'm sure he's just like his father only. Who's Manikandan? I'm sure I know all other age people in the last five years. Kashi, I must give you some of my medicines. Even I remember Manikandan. He used to live in E303. Chari, I'm surprised by your memory. Every day we have to remind you who you are. Age has restricted only my short term memory. I am like Saivar. He does not remember the previous ball. <laughs> Likewise, I don't know what happened yesterday. Today I have taken my medicine and I am just fine. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so, where is Manikandan now? He died. <laughs> just before you came to the complex. <laughs> that hunk money is his son. That's Kaunga? Hmm? <laughs> he does not have any respect. He is the only one who did not touch my feet. He appears to be a short-tempered ruffian who, who uses, generously uses foul language. No, just like his father. But Manikandan was very proud of his son. I can never forget that Manikandan. Let him evolve a bus conductor. Really? Huh? A bus conductor? And he managed to send his son to UH? Incredible, right? Bala can never forgive Manikandan. Come on. He's dead. And you're not there. But Bala was made to get down from the bus about 10 years back because he did not have the exact change. Oh, bus conductors do that all the time. It's their only source of power in life. That's true. But Bala was made to get down though they were friends, good friends at that. Even then, what should I say, until then. That's unbelievable. Bala confronted him later. He said he had a fight with his dear wife that morning and was in a bad mood. I can never forgive that money, Kandal. I reminded him on the bus. I say, money, we are friends. And the only thing that he could tell me 
after he stopped the bus, made me get down the bus. So what? That chandala. Anyway, God has punished him with a wife who is a real Rakshasi. Bala, you must let go. It is easy for you to say, Chari. I saw how upset you were when that Roshni was talking to your granddaughter. And we don't even know if Roshni told your granddaughter about the birds and the bees. What are you trying to suggest? <coughs> Anjali is an angel. Who else could have told her? Exactly. Somebody else's pain is easy to rationalize. Kashi. We must do something about the morality of the children in our community. The other day, I saw Roshni with a couple of other girls and they were looking at WhatsApp messages. I am sure it had some adult content. And when they saw me walking by, they quickly switched off the telephones and I could hear them laugh as I left them. <laughs> they are young adults. I am sure you have received uh, adult content on your cell phone as well. Kashi, you are missing the point, I say. There were a bunch of Lutherios hanging around. It is very disturbing, Kashi. I will not allow this place to become a pickup joint. I know. I am going to start, immediately going to start, Balavihar classes for the children in our community. Oh, Bala, that is uh, heavy stuff. The kids would hate you. Oh, I don't care. Our kids need to learn something about our culture, our heritage. Uh, <coughs> singing of some hymns and bhajans and shlokas. That is the need of the day. I, I need some volunteers. I think this is a very good cause. And it will certainly prevent our girls from dressing like Matahari is walking around in the twilight. Hey, Kashi, you bring it up in the society committee meeting. Mm -hmm. You, you, you encourage all the parents to tell the children uh, under the age of 15 to attend the Balavihar classes. Bala, kids these days do not listen to their parents. <coughs> if they do not attend the Balavihar classes, we will think of a way to shame them and their parents. It is mandatory every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Done. What about kids of other religions? Chari, don't even joke about such things. Kashi, did you speak to the others about uh, building uh, a small uh, urinal next to the elevator? It's going to be a little tougher than I thought. Why it is a great idea of yours to combine the grievance meeting with the sinking fund discussions. Unfortunately, a lot of the grievances appear to be around the hike in maintenance and the requirement for a sinking fund. But with Kasi Mama here, we should hopefully be able to convince people about the need for the money. Not so, Arjun. And be prepared to hear all kinds of grievances. We've been doing this for six months now, and so far, the only people who have come for these meetings have been to complain about their neighbors cooking non-vegetarian, loud mujik, children playing soccer in the afternoons, and the generator not kicking on in time. And one of our blokes, one of our neighbors, clears his throat every morning so loudly <laughs> that it wakes up all the neighbors two floors above. I'm a little worried about hang by. He may have to be a little patient, huh? Because although we have one full hour, some of our society residents will take their own sweet time. Hey, Michael Max. Will not take much time of yours. I was coming late last night and all the security folks were asleep. I had to open the gates myself. When I woke the security guy, he came to beat me up. I'm afraid I'll find it very difficult to contribute to the increase in the maintenance. Hey, who is the security person? We'll fire him right away. No, no. 
I don't want the poor man to lose his job. I just wanted you guys to know I will vehemently oppose as a security is terrible. And this is something that we can fix very easily. Or maybe we could give that security guard a warning. Or please tell us who it was so we could improve security. Kasi Mama, it does not matter any longer. I just wanted you guys to know I cannot support the increase in good conscience. Thank you, Jignesh. I'll be leaving. Chief's wife doesn't want to pay the maintenance, so he's making up excuses. I don't think he's telling lies, hey, bhai. He may be drunk, so he cannot remember who he picked the fight with. Have that logic. Come, come, come. Uh, 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 folks, let me get straight to the point. Jayanth has asked for the pool timings to change from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. He assures you that he and his friends are not going to make any noise. And Ratan Lalji, hey Jayanth bhai, this matter is coming up for discuss on in the EGM. So please wait until then. I don't want everything to be decided at the EGM. This society is full of Batrasis who go to sleep at 10 p.m. They will vote against the proposal, I know. So let's not kill all the joy here by making everything an issue to be decided by some majority. What do you mean all Madrasis go to sleep at 10 p.m.? <laughs> I drink till 4 a.m. and I'm a Madrasi. Hank, you don't need to sound like an alcoholic to make your point. <laughs> you come to my house, we shall discuss this issue till 4 in the morning. Maybe I'll come to your house every day after 10 p.m. <laughs> uh, let's see. Come tonight first. Achha, Ratan Lalji, you came for Jayant's matter. What have you actually come for? You know been for these meetings before. Are you only asked me to come here. Did I? Really? Ah, yes, I remember now. <laughs> it is about your dog. Some of our resident neighbors have complained that your dog has started barking a lot recently. Ah, yes, I am also very concerned about my dog. He, he has been barking a lot more and I was trying to come to speak to you and Kasi Mama to discuss this myself. <laughs> Ratan Lalji, I do not know anything about dogs, and I am certain that Kasimama here doesn't either. So I am not sure how we both can help you make your dog bark less. <laughs> oh. Oh, but you can. Like any animal lover, I can tell the smallest change in mood of my dog. You know, dogs are like human beings. Only, they cannot talk. Can you get to the damn point we have other dogs? Members, talking members. <laughs> he's your business group. Ratanaji, how can we help you? So coming to Roxy, my dog, he's very sensitive. And he dislikes all the chanting that this Bala and these children are doing in these cultural classes. So he's barking all the time. I want these classes to stop with immediate effect. Mr. Ratanlal, these classes are from 10 to 12 on Sunday. But I believe your dog is barking every day. I agree <laughs> that the classes are from 10 to 12 only on Sundays. But that Bala is a fanatic. He has told these children that they should chant whenever they are free and that God should hear them. So they should chant loudly. So they are chanting all the time and on weekends and on holidays and it goes on for many hours. My building there will be six children going to that Bala Vihar. Isn't that a very nice feeling in the society? This is not a retirement community Mr. Khan. <laughs> Besides it's really affecting my dog. He's barking a lot more and these children find it funny. I cannot blame them because they are just children. But it's really affecting my dog's health. I want this committee to regulate the chanting of the mantras. Uh, or get the parents to get the kids to keep the volume down. This chanting of shlokas is very good for the society. I'm shocked that you are even suggesting that we stop having it. We are facing a moral crisis where young adults are dressing inappropriately. Are using foul language, having a vested mindset, they lose respect for their body and maybe engage in an improper conduct. Many senior citizens and concerned parents have told us that we should showcase the piety in our complex to other complexes so we could have a religious movement of sorts. Collectively, we will work towards weeding out this amorous cloud hanging over us. <laughs> <laughs> Which planet have you fallen from? <laughs> They're adults. They could be 18 or as old as you. Who are you to take the call? God, you guys can fight all you want. I am out. In case 
you do not regulate the chanting of these mantras, I will be forced to call the Society of Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. And that will not be pleasant. Hey, hang by. We are one team, huh? Doesn't mean I'm going to take this bullshit. Wait and see. Everything happened so quickly. I heard that this uh, Arjun and Hank were there. So I thought I would come and talk about the gym. <laughs> Auntie, don't worry about the gym fees. We're looking to find a cheaper vendor so we don't have to increase it. No, 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 no. My husband had an accident outside the gym near the Sona. He had a minor stroke. But the doctors are confident he will recover soon. Oh, that is good, Raja Lakshmi. What can we do for you? Ah, I want the society to pay the bills for the accident. He will be in the hospital for three days and I hold this society responsible for this accident. Wait a second. Why should we pay for the accident? What was he doing in the sauna? There are enough signs outside that says it is not meant for people above a certain age or with certain medical conditions. Ayo, he did not enter the sona, pa. He was just standing outside the sona. I don't know why. Does he have poor eyesight? Not any longer. He had a cataract operation last year. And since then, he has a 25-20 vision. All that I know is that he was startled when a resident woman came out of the sona naked. He fell and got his stroke. That bitch. I'm not sorry to call her that. She panicked and ran away. Raja Lakshmi, who was this lady? <laughs> you can tell us. We will reach out to her discreetly and ask her to settle with you and your husband. He's refusing to say the name. He's a noble soul. <laughs> he feels that if he runs after the lady, people will judge her. Excuse me? <laughs> judge her? <laughs> what was he doing in the sauna? And I can't believe you're asking us to pay for the accident. Mr. Hyde, <laughs> when I came here, I thought I would get sympathy. I would not need to ask you to pay the hospital charges. You would have volunteered yourselves. <laughs> but I see that I am dealing with a bunch of thugs. <laughs> I am going to contact a lawyer. And this time around, I'm going to claim damages as well. But Mr. Hank, Chandru is a very respected citizen. I think this issue is worth a debate. Raja Lakshmi, we will discuss internally and get back to you. Please do not do anything in haste. Hey, bye. you cannot get so angry, huh? In the society when we say we consider an issue, the maker goes into a, a what do you call it? A black hole. <laughs> so please, take it easy. Intriguing. Do you think Raja Lakshmi believes all that she said to us? How does it matter now? A year has stroke and that is sad. I wish that lady had not run away. That way I mean, no the problem to fix in not the hours. But are they hard up for money? Hey, they are a retired proper living of a pencil. And something doesn't add up. Hey, what is in your mind, Mr. Arjun? Why do you, don't you say things clearly? Why do you say everything in a confusing manner? I like to... Uh, I like to what? 
I like to build up my arguments so I can be more uh, persuasive. But since you're insisting, let me see if I can be a little snappy about it. See, if they cannot afford to pay the hospital bills, then I don't see why Chandru or anyone in his place would be so concerned about somebody being judged harshly by society. So either he was peeping, and the person knew he was peeping, and so it would be difficult for him to ask them to pay the hospital bills, or Hmm. That's also possible. Arjun, can you stop pontificating and get to the fucking point? My head is spinning with all the shit I've heard today! <laughs> Sit. <laughs> Sorry, Hank. Uh, um. Or he slipped and fell in shock. <coughs> because he saw a man coming out of the sun. <laughs> now see, that makes more sense because not too many women use the sauna in a complex. And it would be extremely unlikely that any normal man would be willing to pay the hospital bills for another man that he's just seen naked. Wonderful boss, wonderful. I will definitely send my children to study in America so that they can start thinking like you. <laughs> Thank you. Not sure he meant that as a compliment. <laughs> okay, we have some visitors and I know that this is about the sinking fund but the increase in maintenance. Um, by the way, where is Zambi? I thought he was coming this year as well. He should be on his way. I, I gave him the slip as I wanted to discuss something in his absence. Wow, that's some friendship. <laughs> hey, Mr. Hahn, I neither have the time nor the desire to argue with you. Ashi, just before we get on to this sinking fund issue, I am more than convinced that we need a moral code in our society. Uh, that we should bring up for discussion before the EGM. Moral code. <laughs> I was just finishing my uh, Bala Vihar classes and I saw Roshni and a bunch of other girls from our community. As you can expect, they were scantily clad. <coughs> so I asked them, where are you off to? And they said they were going to catch the Sunday matinee. I then asked them, are your parents comfortable the way you're dressed? Don't you think that remark was a tad bit invasive? I agree, it was. But I had just come out of uh, chanting shlokas. And when you're in that spiritual zone, all boundaries disappear. Every child is like your own child. So it was like asking my own granddaughter. Can you believe this shit? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, go ahead. Roshni and her friends began to mock me. Roshni said, if you truly understood mythology, then you will have no problem with my attire. And they began to speak about Urvasi, Melaka, <laughs> Rangba, and many other goddesses in mythology who wore little or no clothes. <laughs> wow. What did you say then? I said, uh, the Apsaras lived in a world where men were good, unlike the world of today. So I was only cautioning them to be safe. To which Roshni said, in that case, why don't you ask the men to change and let us uh, dress the way we wish? How irreverent. I mind shaking with anger at that girl, her impertinence. <laughs>
Why didn't you tell Ambi? Are you tell him what? He will only laugh at me. It will have no impact if I alone spoke to him. I will bring it up in the EJ. When Ambi realizes that it is not I alone, but others in society who see this as an issue, maybe he will be convinced that he has a big problem on his hand. Mr. Bala, your good friend Ambi is here. All right, guys. It's been well over an hour. Let's finish the sinking fund issue in the next 10 minutes. I'm hungry. Sorry, folks, I'm late. Hey, Bala? Where were you? What was supposed to come together? Hey, didn't you tell me that you were going to have a shower and then call me? Fortunately, I called you home. And your wife said that you're already gone for the meeting. Well, we were about to start talking about the sinking fund. Let us not waste more time. OK, sure. Arjun and Hank, I know we've met several times before, but we're just not convinced that we need to spend so much on maintenance and aside from that contribute to a sinking fund. We've been talking to a lot of the other residents. We're just not convinced. There are still many open questions. Like what? Well, let me start with the notice for the extraordinary general meeting next week. Yeah, yeah I have the notice. There are uh, three items to vote on. Firstly, to agree on a corpus of rupees 50 lakhs for a sinking fund, the interest from which will be used to fund maintenance and replacement of all common equipment, including elevators, generators, gym equipment, time to time upgrade of the swimming pool and uh, painting of the building. And why did you stop reading? I need to go to restroom. But you just got here. Uh, all right, please go. Mr. Rambi, please read on. Do you think he's intentionally going to the restroom to avoid talking about the sinking fund? OK. Um, secondly, to increase the quarterly maintenance fee by 10% to provide for the diesel to run generators given the massive power cuts we've been experiencing here in Bangalore, pay market competitive salaries of security and home care, and to collect funds to celebrate Diwali, Dasara, Holi, Independence Day, Republic Day, and two other minority festivals to be decided by show of hands. Ashi, can I have a cup of coffee, please? My, my, my throat is hurting after chanting all those shlokas. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like even God is asking you to take a break. <laughs> Ma, there is no coffee here, huh? but I can ask my missus to send some Elaichi chai. It will take only five minutes. <coughs> Do you make non-veg in your home? I don't eat or drink anything in such houses. Mr. Bala, let's finish this sinking fund issue. You can eat or drink whatever and wherever you please. Mr. Rami, please read. And finally, to determine by show of hands whether to change the timings of the pool room from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Hey, we are not interested in this item number three. But I think the increase in maintenance is a very important and more relevant topic to discuss. So for starters, if we are going to agree to increase maintenance charges, I think it should not be equal, but be based on the square feet of each apartment. Ah, there are some of us who are of the opinion that the maintenance charges must be on the basis of the number of residents in each apartment. Look, guys, let's not overcomplicate this. All we are trying to do is increase each, each unit's charges by 10%. Let's not start from the beginning, please. I think you are being very harsh. We are all trying to do the good for the community. Yeah. My big issue is with the sinking fund. Here, I think you should take a contribution from each resident on the basis of the number of members <coughs> per household. I'm back. I could uh, hear Bala speaking in the restroom also. Huh? I do not need to use the elevators, nor the gym equipment, and also the swimming pool. Thus, when you're computing, my contribution for the swimming uh, sinking fund, it has to be only for painting of the building and any structural repairs. Even
even if you account it this way, I am not saying I am going to contribute. Let there be no doubt. <laughs> I don't remember who, but I am sure someone said that we should take a look at each asset in the building and then take a fee based on the expected usage times, the number of family members. Even businesses these days are looking for such usage based models. In my case, beyond what Chari already said, I am almost blind now. So if the color of the building is fading a little bit, do I care? So my contribution to the sinking fund will be only towards any structural repair. Wow, Ambi Mama, usage-based models. I am really impressed that you spent so much time researching this in such detail. What are you folks smoking? <laughs> We are trying to raise money to help the society, not do a PhD on the best way of allocating the fund. <laughs> We've had enough meetings before this and nobody ever brought this stuff up before. And let me add, even if you did, I would tell you, you would be wasting your time and mine. I know that the rest of the residents are a little more reasonable than you guys, so I'm going to take my chances and say, what the way you want to, I don't care. I have been chatting with a lot of youngsters as well. Your committee is in for a surprise. The meeting is going to be hostile. I don't give a damn. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. We are one society and this is voluntary work. Please don't fight. Jignesh, we are reasonable people, but we don't have to take this kind of talk. And they keep talking of increasing maintenance. These days we don't even get water 24 hours of the day. I get it 24 seven. All I do is spare a tank and load myself up with water. Walk the way you want to, I don't give a shit. Ah. Since you have so much water in your house, I shall visit you every day to take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Try coming. <laughs> I will break your legs. Hara, this bounder has no respect for elders.
committee is concerned about our hard earned money and will manage connections wherever possible. Oh, so much. One for all. Nonsense. Then tell me why have you been cutting part of my house, huh? Hey, Jatin Bhai, why don't you pay your monthly maintenance on time? We have no option but to cut your power every time you default. As it is, we are struggling to ensure that the community runs well. If you don't pay on time, and if other people don't pay on time, it becomes very difficult. <coughs> Who said I was not willing to pay? Why are you not accepting cash? Jatin Bhai, you know very well, case is okay in our business dealings. Unfortunately, with the society, our bylaws do not allow us to take more than 1,000 rupees in case. To be honest, the bylaws clearly state that it must be a single 1,000 rupee note. Now, because of this uh, demonetization, we will have to have another AGM to reword that specific bylaw to read as 1000 rupees can be 1000 rupee notes or 2 500 rupee notes. Screw the letters! When you cut part of my house, I called your phone 15 times and you did not pick my thoughts. That you cut part during cricket match. I came running to your house, I thought I will get a heart attack and you did not open the door for 5 minutes. Jatin I have told you several times now. That when I am doing my yoga, even if there is an earthquake, I will not do it. <laughs> so, yeah, Jatin Bhai, you should have called my wife. She would have told you not to disturb me. Uh, Jatin Bhai, let us look ahead and forget what has happened. Come to the grievance meeting and I will help you address this concern uh, going ahead. Uh, sir, sir, but what about violations? Huh? Why are we not talking about bylaw violations? I have written several letters to this committee about the external facade and how enclosing the balconies is ruining it. But you people have ignored it. <coughs> Why? Because your uh, uh, committee member Arjun Singh was the first person to enclose his balcony. In fact, when he did that, I was the president of the committee. And, uh, and when I asked his wife, she told me she will, if I stopped her, she would file a lawsuit personally against me. Don't make a right, right, Mr. Subramanian. I had my reasons for closing the balcony, and they were compelling. Then I can speak to my wife, and maybe, just maybe, we can think about taking down the enclosing. I know your wife; she will not let you do that. <laughs> excuse me, now, excuse. Me. We have an agenda to discuss, Arjun. I told you when you joined this committee itself that this is an issue. Now, if you cannot fix the issue, then I think that you should resign. We cannot have a committee member running afoul of the bylaws. <laughs> so, residents, I assure you that if Arjun does not remove that uh, enclosure, then we will remove him from the committee. Bullshit! What about the urinating maniac? If we find him, can we kick him out of the society? Let us not think about these disruptive suggestions. We are a society where the young and old are supposed to live in harmony. Residents, we are all interested in the community being a great place to live in. Then why are we fighting like this? That too, with Dasera coming up next week, we have to celebrate it together, in person and in spirit. Halloween. I'm told that we have no funds for these foreign festivals, and then we say Bangalore is the Silicon Valley of the East. <laughs> Let's take that offline, Mrs. George. Uh, all this is very good feedback, and uh, well, this committee absolutely appreciates all the observations of all the residents, but we need to get to the agenda. Now, we have to discuss the increase in the maintenance fees and the setting up of a sinking fund. So I request you all please, just keep the conversation to these two topics so that we can put the proposals to vote. Guys! Guys! Why is our gym equipment so bad? Isn't it some right whom we bought the equipment from? <laughs> Interesting. What is your point? Maybe Hiva can answer that question. What is it that you're suggesting, Mr. Madan? Yes, Mr. Shankar Rai is my relative. 
when we bought the gym equipment from him, I was not on the committee. And we can certainly look for another vendor when we come for replacements. But Mr. Mother, would you like to tell us all how you allowed Airtel to install telecommunication towers outside your house? <coughs> while, while there are rumors that you made money, my bigger concern is the health risk from those towers that you have put our dear residents to. Now, I think that we can have an EGM to uh, dismantle them. Okay, okay. You guys are about, I mean, you guys are a bunch of uneducated people if you think it will cause cancer. The latest medical journal says risk of radiation from these stars is at best one of toxic rate. If it was such an issue, that would have been all over it. <laughs> We need to talk about the grave issue, the unfortunate fall of Mr. Chandru outside the sauna. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Rajalakshmi informs me, Chandru is yet to recover from the stroke and the medical bills are mounting. I know the committee's response has been very unsympathetic to our request for payment of the medical bills. I too don't think we should pay. Yeah. 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 Mr. Chari, can you stop blabbering and get to the damn point? If Mr. Money talks this disrespectfully, we'll all leave right away. Yeah. 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 This is no way to talk to our family. Oh, I know you will not apologize. Mr. Chari, please accept my apology unconditionally on behalf of Mr. Hank. Now, please continue. Thank you. Despite you being headstrong, we like you <laughs> because you're respectful. I am concerned the way one of our residents just ran away from the scene. As a society, what are we becoming? An elderly person accidentally steps into the sauna and at the gold age, to many of us, the eyes of an old man are eyes of God. There is, no, there is no scope for fear or shame. So true. My husband was also saying the same thing. We do not know what exactly happened there. But it is crystal clear. The lady just ran away. Maybe if some help would have been provided to Mr. Chandru, he may not have suffered the stroke. <coughs> Under normal circumstances, we do not need to know who she is, but her unwillingness to support the family in this hour of need is forcing us to take this drastic step of discovering who she is. Shaming her, potentially imprison her. We are going to have a look at the CCTV footage of that period and file a case of criminal negligence if she does not pay the medical bills of the law. This is a public humiliation of a person. Surely there must be a more dignified way. There is. And we are ready to go the extra mile. One of our good friends, a practitioner of a variant of Yunani, has said that what I'm going to propose has had stellar results in the past and could just work. <laughs> we have spoken to Mrs. Rajalakshmi. We are going to take Chandru back to the sauna. <laughs> Make him lie down the way we found him. If the lady has a conscience, <laughs> we are hoping she will reenact the scene. <laughs> Seeing her the way he saw her on that fateful day could trigger a neurological reaction. <laughs> and he may recover from the stroke. <laughs> In which case, we do not propose anything further against the person and Chandru can pay his medical bills. <laughs> In deference to the privacy for the two individuals, we are going to request all society residents to stay away from the sauna. <laughs> but how are you so sure you Shut up, Arjun! <laughs> Alright guys, let's not waste 
time on these distractions and put the sinking fund to work. Friends, friends, residents, there is a far bigger issue that is threatening to impact our lives and the lives of our children and grandchildren who live here. Rather than continue talking about it in private, it is important that we bring it out in the open and to, together, together work towards a solution. We need a moral code. As our children, boys and girls, are indulging in behavior that is inappropriate. <laughs> moral code, my ass. Thank you. Mr. Bala, will you please finish what you're saying so that we can just get to the agenda also? As I was saying, before Marikand and son interrupted me rudely, we need a moral code. As so many of you have commented to me in private, when our girls dress inappropriately, at the end, it is a reflection on us as grandparents, parents, teachers, role models. Oh, huh? <coughs> The children in our society are our children. So I am going to request our friend, Mr. Ambishekar, to engage with his granddaughter, Roshini, who is becoming a negative role model, influencing many of our children. I am not taking the name of any other guardians, as I am convinced that if Roshini were to be impressed upon, and if Roshini were to mend her ways, then she can easily influence the other girls to change yeah. <laughs> Who are you to preach morality, Mr. Bala? How is it any of your head? I know my granddaughter. She's a lovely child. Did you? Did you even think of that child before you brought this up in such a public forum? No wonder I threatened to break your legs. And if I were any younger, I would have come there and broken your hands to help me. Please calm down. We have the highest respect for you and for your family. We want only what is good for the society. And now, your granddaughter is certainly displaying signs of revolt, which is not good for her in the long run. I do not want to go into all the things that you have observed, but if you do not control her, you will have to regret it someday. I'm not going to stand here and listen to this nonsense any longer. You folks are a bunch of losers. I agree with this, sir. That is true. on the impressionable children in society who ask me to talk to you. I don't care what those people think, Tata. Have you ever thought that maybe I do? When I looked up, I saw so many heads nodding in agreement. Not just people of my vintage, but mothers with young kids. It's difficult not to be swayed by such consensus. Tata, Tata, you know that there's nobody more dear to me than you. Please don't talk like this. I can't handle it when you're upset. Roshni, I've never been so humiliated in my life. For the first time, I'm asking myself whether I've been a good guardian to you. Maybe never. Tata, why are you taking this so personally? What do you want me to do? I don't think there's anything you can do. I worry for you. And with all these negative opinions, I don't know how you will be able to live here any longer. We may need to leave this place. 
anyway. God only knows what else I have to see before I leave this world. I'm so exhausted. I'm going to sleep. You should too. Tata. Tata. Tata, please don't leave. for taking the time to, to come to this meeting at 10.30 at night. Uh, I, I just couldn't sleep. Well, I suspect that some of you couldn't either. Frankly, had you not called up my place three times, I would not have come. <laughs> sleep wasn't an issue for me. I'm coming to you, Hank. I have been reflecting on this EGM and, and, and what went wrong. And, oh, what a disaster. I have been to many EGMs, but I have never seen anything that was so so emotional and out of control. And then when I stepped out, I heard somebody say that this committee is doomed with people like Hank in it. Hima madam, we are one team. And I did not want to bring this up earlier. But because we are doing a post-mortem, I have to say that Mr. Hank here was very disrespectful to some of our senior citizens during the grievance meetings. They even warned him, but he just ignored them and told them to go to hell. <laughs> chee, 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 Mr. Hank. What is the use of all this education? My grandfather used to say, it is okay to be corrupt. You can visit hookers too infrequently. <laughs> but you must never be disrespectful to elders. Think of all the rubbish that you tell these people. At least think of their age. I was thinking what they said when I responded. Don't try to make me feel guilty because I don't. Hank, I think that everyone here thinks that you are responsible for the residents' uh, anger against this committee. Now, I, I don't want to talk about for everyone else, but I'm interested to know what they think. It is difficult for me to be objective. Bala and I go back a long way. I don't have to say anything for you to know how I feel about the way Hank behaved. I think it is shameful. I cannot even repeat some of the things that I believe Hank told our residents today. I was honestly a little surprised that Hank even chose to engage with the residents. Although I do think the older folks could have shown some restraint. So in a nutshell, while I agree with his observations, I still don't think he should have shared them with the other residents. Hey, sorry, I didn't understand what he just said. <laughs> I, will, I will tell you later. Thank you for your opinions. Just to make it clear, it makes no difference to the way I feel. Hank, we are a team. And sometimes you have to go by what the team says. And the team will do anything to screw the person who does not conform. Look, I am not a quitter. And I have been trying to work out how we can salvage the situation. <coughs> so um, I propose, Hank, that you write a note to the residents apologizing for the deep hurt that you have caused them and uh, telling them about this meeting and that we encourage you to do some soul searching. And maybe you can add that in the spirit of soul searching, you have decided that you cannot continue with this committee anymore. And you're considering finding a spiritual mentor to stem this rod that is set. <laughs> Would that be what all of you would want me to do? Other than Arjun here, who doesn't know what he wants for himself. <laughs> Forget the society. I think that this is what we would all want. So let me put things in perspective here. You guys exactly understand the way I feel. It's more likely that I'll agree to having a sex changed operation performed on me than agree to any of those confessional nonsenses that you want me to make. Mr. Hank. You have a lot of money. Maybe you can go elsewhere. For us, these are our neighbors. 
and we have to live here. Hayek, I think that we are all agreed that you are the cancer we need to remove. So, I request you to leave. And if we can write a note on the back of your resignation letter that we asked you to leave, then that cannot be too much to us. And the society will feel better too. I will not let you insinuate that you had any control over my decision to stay or to quit. I joined this committee to find out who that pervert was who was being in the elevator. It's likely more evident now that there is no way that you'll have webcams installed in the elevators. As a society, we don't move on anything. So, I'm not just going to quit this committee of paralyzed invertebrates, but also this society of hypocritical old farts. I'm glad I have money. Just remember, I'm not going to quit the committee because you asked me to, but because you're dysfunctional. And I will leave the society when I'm ready to. But then we will have to all resign as well. Is that what you want, Hank? That's your call. Oh, and I have another issue to bring up. <laughs> Towards the end, when the rabble rousers refused to vote and made us uh, adjourn the meeting, I noticed that uh, some of them seemed to be Kasi Mama's friends. And they were supported by the young and the old. Now, given Mama's age and, and stature, I will not ask him why he, he, he remained quiet and did not uh, actually talk to any of the residents. And couldn't we have kept this moral code business to another meeting? Hima! When you think of some of the challenges facing society today, the sinking fund and some of the other issues you wanted to discuss are insignificant. The character of the society is at stake. And so it was very important for us to discuss the moral issues in the meeting. The unanimity of the voice of society was required to shake Ambi out of his stupor and make him talk to his errant granddaughter. What is wrong with that Ambi? When I see Roshni next, I'm going to ask her to just be herself. You guys are a bunch of controlling mafia. Oh, you have no respect for age, Hank. I wish somebody told your father the, about you the way that someone told Ambi about his granddaughter. Unlike Ambi, my father would have shown me the finger. Oh, I don't want to engage with you. Hello? Who? Oh, oh, Miss Granddaughter Roshni. He jumped off the terrace. She have to take her life. My God, what has that girl done to herself? I believe her parents have been informed and they're on their way from Dubai. Wonder what they must be thinking. I don't have the courage to go to her house. And if I don't go, that will make me even more. What will I tell her parents if I go? And what about, what about Ampi? And what will all the people think of me if I don't go? Everybody will be watching me. Does it make any difference? 
it's now Bala whether you go or don't. It's easy for you to say, Charlie. It was I who brought up our behavior in the EGM. That's true. What do you mean, that's true? Bala, you were pleased. You were the one who raised the issue of controlling Roshni in the EGM. Okay, okay, I did. But would you agree that, that I said only what everybody thought of? Here, the three of us, and a lot of people. In fact, when I spoke to Ambi and suggested that he spend more time with his granddaughter watching over her, I thought I heard a thunderous applause. Just not able to think. You think you are trying to do some good? How forsaken that little child must have felt. What about Ambi? He would relive his last conversation with Roshni for the rest of his life. What have you done? Roshni was an outlier. And as a society, we do not know how to handle outliers. I think outliers bring out the most primordial insecurity for relevance. Oh God, that poor child. Do you think people will forgive me? Perhaps not at the short run. What, what do you mean not? A short run. I'm old, Gazi. And I don't know how much time is left for me. At one level, you know, there is something very disturbing about the fact that even beyond the girl's death, and the damage it has done to her family, we are concerned only about how this will affect us. We should all hang our heads in shame. At some point or the other, each one of us has played with a child as she was growing up. What do I tell you, Bala? Bala. Bala. For how long will people not forgive you, me, or us? I don't know. I hope they never do. And even if they do, what about our own conscience? The reality is that we will forgive ourselves because life must Go on. <laughs> and they will forgive us probably when one of us dies. And then they will associate only the good with us. And the death of Roshni, for which each one of us has played a role, will be a distant memory. This is not the first time that a young life has been snuffed out because of the desires of society for its members to conform. And neither will this be the last. Anytime, some of the younger folks would have become old, just as we are today, and would be struggling just as we are today make sense out of a world that they cannot comprehend. <laughs> they will become, or they will live in the moral world, just as we are doing. And we hold it as a crutch for their 
infirmities. They will become the conscience of society. And when things go wrong, they will seek to distance themselves from the situation, just as we are doing now. It's getting late. It's time to go home. Tomorrow will be a long